Welcome to Tent Talk, the podcast with Nancy McCrady, where we talk about life under the big tent of God's presence and the provoking process of discipleship. Here we go. Hey, everybody. Welcome to this short series, The Specifics of Sonship. Listen carefully so that you can begin to discern that which is a total gift from God to you and then what your participation uh, is required for you to go into the actual living out of all of the purposes of that gift of his life. You see, you can't remain in a herd mentality. There comes that moment of deep maturing when you realize he has put something very specific uh, within me for he and I to live out together. And it's not going to look like anybody else. You need to know the specifics of sonship that you might have the opportunity to truly make your best decisions. Therefore, you can go on with him into the depths of life. So I pray that you're going to let the Father have his way in you so that then you can be his way in the earth and he can live through you in full agreement, full participation, and there can be the true the true sons of this hour of history coming forth in great dependency and great humility. So take a listen. I hope you enjoy it. Talk to you soon. Wow, I am sitting in a flat in Wieselberg, Austria. If only you could see what I am seeing. There is a view from this apartment, this flat, that is so magnificent. And I've stayed here many times before. So welcome to Tent Talk. And this is the podcast of Nancy McCready Ministries. And uh, I've arrived back in Wieselberg, Austria, uh, from St. Oswald, Austria, as of yesterday. And so I'm recording these podcasts. Uh, and they're, I'm not even sure yet what the title will be. Um, But as I'm sitting in my flat looking out these fabulous windows into the view, there is this magnificent snow-capped mountain. And I've stayed here many times before, and I'm like, how did I miss that whole mountain out there? Did that just get moved in? (laughs) How did I not see that before? It is magnificent. And though I can't remember all the Austrian names of it, they told me last night, well, basically the name of this mountain. It's the Father Mountain. I said, no way, no way, right? So I'm like, okay, I think God is speaking to me. And sometimes the danger in our lives is the moment God begins to speak to us, you know, we rush out to give it to other people and it can lose something uh, in the passing on if you pass it on too soon. So I'm not going to pass on to you what he's saying to me. Uh, because I'm getting ready to spend about two and a half days of rest in this five-week trip here in Europe uh, to just, you know, refresh and and um, be able to see some other beautiful parts of Austria. I'm going to Traunsee, and then we're going into Salzburg, and then back here to Wieselberg for a leadership meeting uh, here in a couple of days, and then back on to Poland. Um So maybe later I'll share with you what he shares with me personally. But I pulled out my book that I I bring it with me when I come, uh, which is entitled The Ultimate Intention by Deverne Fromke. This is a book that has led me into the scripture in such a way that I attempt to share this uh, with everyone I can But it's because of the deep embedding of this within me that God has had to work over the years. And as I was rereading just today, you know, it's good to reread and to to let him speak something he has previously spoken to you. The Father has spoken to you before. But you see, you're not the same person now. You're not at the same place. And even if you are, Uh, or it seems like you are. He's taking you forward. Remember this, though he always is bringing us back to him, our first love, he is not bringing you back to your first days of your first love. 
No, he's taking you forward into himself. He's taking you deeper in with him. So as I'm getting ready to to just let him speak to me over these next two or three days, for me and him, also for the nation of Austria, I am brought back to uh, the chapter in Deverne Fromke's book, uh, which in my book it's uh, chapter 9, and it's uh, titled The Father's Plan Unfolds. And though there are many other things, I just want to get to the part, uh, and maybe I'll do these in short episodes for the next two or three days, we will see. He talks about how the Father continues to cultivate dependency in us upon Him, because that's how we were meant to live. Now, flesh can't stand that, and it wants to throw that off. Uh, because it seems so restrictive, controlling. Of course it's not. Flesh is the restrictive, controlling one. But flesh always wants to rear up, you know, is that I'm going to lose myself, you know. Um, Am I just going to be God's robot? You know, it's like, well, no, no, you're not. Um, You understand that to actually live as man was intended to live always, is the absolute freedom, and that only comes in our oneness with him. So, as I'm rereading this today, I thought, this is good. You know, last episodes were on I Identify as a Son, so let's go deeper as I'm sitting (laughs) in the view of the Father Mountain. Um, This is good. This is good to reflect on. So again, I'm going to read a little bit of this, because when they say it so well, uh, these these guys that wrote in generations past, it would do us well in this generation to listen to the words of those who finished their race, the words of those who penned certain things that we might have them. The baton has passed, my friends, the baton from one generation to the next. Will we be those? Will we be those who heed their words? The words written in scripture for us, the words written in certain books that were like literal batons passed to us of what they saw and heard in their generation. Again, don't be fooled. Don't be fooled to think that because we're in the 21st century that we're a more highly evolved, you know, type of human being. No, we're not. The condition of man remains the same. And God looks for those in every generation who will take his wisdom, his truth, his solution to our problem, that we will take everything the Father says and we will imbibe it for ourselves. We will drink deeply because we see our own personal need for it. And then it'll break open a mighty door of his life and truth to those that we have the privilege of having any influence with whatsoever that they too might know him. Hmm? So I'm just going to read some excerpts and then I'll probably stop and then make another episode. And, and, um, but I hope that this will encourage you and cause you to want to go in deeper. Um, I'll always say this, my friends, please don't just try to have a nice balanced life. Please, because that's going to mean that you're going to be creating a balance yourself. I'm encouraging you always to go in for the fullness of life. My friends, the fullness of life is not a nice humanly balanced life. I'm sure that God wants me to have blah, blah, blah. (laughs) God wants you, my friends, and he means to be your all in all. And then out of that comes the fullness of life with him. He brings right order to you. And then you will be able to live the life that he wrote down for you. Fulfill the assignment that he has for you. If you're just trying to have a nice Christian life, you're trying to have a nice orderly life, a nice married life, a nice single life, this or that, I want you to realize that oftentimes that is in direct opposition to what the Father 
is taking you specifically into. Maybe that's what I'll title this, the specifics of sonship. There's a specific life that God has called you to, that he's written over you, that only he can produce in you, that only he can bring into your reality. Of course, it's going to be, as you're going to hear, with your full cooperation and participation. So, let me read. Uh, We have uh, to uh, see uh, that the original intention of the Father was not determined by sin, as so many unwittingly infer, but rather in the Father heart, It was all in spite of sin. From the beginning, we are sure that God intended for Adam and all of his family to develop morally, mentally, and spiritually. We know that Adam was created perfect, but now by this we mean that he was without, I'm sorry, by this we mean that he was without imperfections because he was the handiwork of God. He was perfect even as a little baby is perfect, yet untried or undeveloped, in moral or spiritual development, which could only come through choices. In referring to this, Oswald Chambers suggests it was according to the plan of God that Adam, by a series of choices, would be required to take part in his own development. That is, quote, he was to transform the life of nature into the spiritual life by obeying God. If Adam created neutral or voluntarily to turn God's way, and choose dependence upon him, he would thereby become able to receive of the tree of life, which represents God's own life, Christ as life. God would then have a life union with man. This is sonship. God's intended pathway for Adam was sonship, heirship, and throneship. But these three phases of God's plan can only become real as his sons learn to be led by the Spirit. Quote, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are mature sons of God. Romans 8.14 From eternity, God's call to Adam and all of his posterity has been to enter into sonship, which is the gateway to participation in his very life and purpose, appropriation of all that God desires to share, and qualifying by discipline for the throne. Notice as Paul arrives at Romans 8.14, after the early chapters have recovered man from his fallen condition, he is at the place where Adam could have been if he had entered upon the pathway of living for God's intention and purpose. It is indeed tragic that too many seem only interested in reaching this point. For with Paul, who understood the Father's intention, this is really the beginning point of realizing for God. Let us see how these three phases, sonship, heirship, and throneship, are to be worked out in the experience of every begotten son by the pathway of participation, appropriation, and qualifying. Oh, my friends, there is quite a bit there. So for today's episode, in the specifics of sonship, I am going to stop and then pick up in our next episode. But think about this. Many times we think that God's trying to get us back to where Adam and Eve were before they made their decision, but that's not where God is taking us. Um, he has a greater plan. That's why it's titled the, the Father's Plan Unfolds. It begins to unfold as we stay with him and we let him talk to us. Let him explain to us what he's after. Because if we do not understand what God wants, we will never understand his ways of getting us there. If we think he wants me to be a good person and that I know that I should put God first and I will do that and I'll do it my way. 
And, uh, you know, we, we don't realize, no, no, what God is after only God can cause to actually occur. But it is with our full participation, which we will see. So think upon these things. Do you understand what the Father has always wanted? Do you understand that this union with him um, is only uh, through our choosing so? Um, and that's just the beginning point, right? That's just the beginning of the true maturing of the sons. So in our next episode, I'll read a bit more. It's good to be with you today. Love you all. For more information on Nancy, please visit nancymccrady.com or follow her on social media at nbmccrady.com.